conservation a nightmare if you actually stop for a moment and really think about what conservation is all about or meant to be all about. Um, what is it meant to be all about then? Well, what is it meant to be all about? You tell me. When did you last? When did you last hear anyone? Uh, when did you last hear anyone actually discuss what conservation is supposed to be doing? Did you? Do you? Do you ever hear anyone? Not really. No. Talk about it's, that. It's normally just discussions about saving a particular megafauna species or a famous species that people tend to care about that's yeah. normally the conversation yeah um but <laughs> so but, well here's the problem what do we conserve i mean why we why we conserve what we want to conserve is a separate question but first of all just a simple thing what do we conserve um what are the criteria bearing in mind that most of the species out there we don't even know whether they are there or not. We don't know anything about them. And they're very rare. Mm. So where do we start? I mean, to correct, if you look around, people who conserve stuff for a living don't spend a lot of time thinking about this. And when you, when you do start thinking about it, you can begin to see why, frankly. Because um, one criterion that's been very popular in the past is 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 rarity yeah and yet rarity is rarity is a waste of time because all rarity says is you could serve everything because everything's rare so that's simple so that doesn't move you on at all <laughs> <laughs> that, that just that just takes you back to square one so so then what do you then what do you say well um you say, well, another popular criterion that's been used in the past is nativeness. We like, we like native mm. species. We don't like alien species. Yes, yeah. Red yeah. squirrels versus grey squirrels. <laughs> Etc. Red exactly. But, but that was never, that was never very good criterion, to be honest, of what to conserve um, for various reasons. And we could spend an enormous amount of time talking about that, frankly. Um, I mean, I wrote, I've written a whole book about this, um, mm. Where Do Camels Belong, which is about why most people have got, you know, the wrong idea about native species, about native and alien species. And most people don't even know what's native and what's alien. Well, yeah, because most people, I think, think rabbits were native, but weren't they introduced to Britain in the Norman or Roman times, yeah, for yeah, example? We, rabbits, rabbits are one of my favourite examples, actually, because what rabbits reveal is that we use, we use being alien as a stick to beat species that we didn't like anyway. Mm. So rabbits and hares are close relations, okay? As you can tell by looking at them. Hares, hares are um, not so common and, and we kind of like hares. You know, there's a biodiversity action plan for hares. People spend good money conserving hares. Rabbits, we don't like. Rabbits, we regard as vermin, you know. Um, but both are introduced. Neither is a native British species. Oh, wow. I didn't know hares were yeah. introduced. Oh, hares wow. are introduced. Hares are introduced. Rabbits are introduced. But no one ever mentions that hares are introduced because it would be embarrassing to do so. It would be, it'd be positively impolite to refer to hares' alien status because we like hares. So we just, we just pass over the fact that hares are not native and move on. Well, I, let's be fair here. I'm talking about the brown hair, the common end. Yeah. The the Arctic hair, um, which lives on Scottish mountains. This is the one that turns white in the winter. That's native. But the the ordinary brown hair, the lowland brown hair, is is uh, is introduced. So, 
nativeness native was, was never very good and we never applied it very consistently anyway um and and but but what's happened recently of course is that climate change means that nativeness is even less used than it used to be as a criterion of what to conserve because conserving native biodiversity in in an age of climate change really is trying to trying to push water uphill frankly um mm. i mean just to give you an example Kew Gardens were Kew Gardens were somewhat galvanized by how many of their trees died in 2022, which you recall was very hot and very dry. Mm. So they've just completed this major kind of uh, forward-looking exercise because Kew Gardens is all about trees. It's what it's, it's what they grow basically, um, and they have to think. They have to think on a long scale, on a long time scale. If you're growing trees, you do. And what they've concluded is that it's simply a waste of time at Kew, planting almost all the common native British trees. Because by the end of the century, they won't survive at Kew. Wow. Kew will just not be suitable for them. If you plant oak or birch, um, you know, now you're wasting your time. They're going to die. So, so nativeness, nativeness is, is a rubbish criteria for what could serve anyway. Um, so, right. Well, so what have we, what have we dealt with? We dealt with, we dealt with the two piggies. Yeah. Yeah. Rarity, useless, nativeness, yeah. useless. What does that leave us with? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Well, what does it leave us with? Um, to be honest, not not a lot really. 